Stan Jibalisco here. I uh, made an, uh, a distinction between radio frequency ground and electrical ground in my video about not touching two grounds at the same time in reference to getting a shock from your electrical ground system and also in regards to ground loops in electrical ground systems and ground systems in general. Well, I showed you an example of an electrical ground, but I'd like to uh, go with an example of a radio frequency ground here and show you exactly what is meant by radio frequency ground. And here is a way to get a radio frequency ground on the amateur radio bands. It comes from my book, Ham and Shortwave Radio, for the Electronics Hobbyist. The copyright date of 2015. It is you can find it in the hard copy book uh, as fig as uh, figure 5-3 on page 145. Minus the formulas, which I'll explain in a moment. Your station is assumed to be right in here. Here's an exterior wall of your house. It does not have to be at ground level. These wires dashed lines do not have to be buried. You want to keep this whole thing though within your property boundary uh, depending upon how accommodating your neighbors are. In some states they'll, they'll be more accommodating than in others but I wouldn't trespass if I were you. Uh, I, I certainly wouldn't trespass if I were me. But you, you, what you basically do is you run a wire of a quarter of an electrical wavelength long, preferably as straight as you possibly can get it, for each band you intend to use. In this case, all of the bands from 10, uh, 30 meters, 17 meters, 12 meters, 80 and 75, 60, 40, 15, and 20 meters, all of these different bands you run a quarter wavelength wire with a f uh, according to the formula L length equals 234 divided by F the frequency in megahertz at 40 megahertz you can assume F to be 7 for example 15 meters F you can assume to be 21 20 meters you can assume it to be 14 60 meters you can assume it to be ab ab about 5 80 and 75, I would say on the CW part of the band about 3.6 and on the phone part of the band about 3.9. 12 meters, you can assume that to be pretty close to 25. 25 megahertz, 17 meters, uh, you can assume that to be on the order of 18 uh, and on 30 meters you can assume it to be 10, on 10 meters you can assume it to be 28 for CW and 29 for phone. So just uh, you, you ought to know the frequencies and you'll find, you'll find the frequency bands listed in this book ham and shortwave radio for the electronics hobbyist. In these formulas L is always expressed in feet and F is always expressed in megahertz. The formulas for meters, uh, you would simply use the calculation formula to convert feet to meters and you'd get different lengths for the uh, different numbers for the lengths. But these should all converge on your chassis ground uh, f for your radio. Again they do not have to be buried. They should not be connected anywhere into your electrical system to avoid grounding loops and to avoid getting shocks from your electrical system. They can actually be on even if you're up 40 stories high and your and your landlords will let you string wires in the sky over in a big city. I, I doubt they will but they might. Uh, and uh, then you simply run these wires out in in free space. You do not have to connect them to any sort of ground. They 
accomplish their action, that is, obtaining the radio frequency ground for your station, by radiating away RF energy into space. They, they actually serve as antennas and grounds at the same time. And that's one of the interesting things about ham radio, is that your antenna can be your ground, or your ground can be part of your antenna, and the important thing to to keep in mind is that this point right here where these wires converge should always be at the feed point where the feed line meets the antenna and I'm assuming that um, here you're running a long wire antenna right out your window somewhere elsewhere in space. If you have a different kind of an antenna though um, say a coaxial cable leading off to a dipole, you may not need, need even need this system. You may be able to get by entirely without it. But this is what a radio frequency ground is as co compared to an electrical ground. Your electrical ground, for example, in your house, your house wiring, does not and should not comprise a radio frequency ground, and your radio frequency ground certainly should not be relied upon to serve as an electrical ground. So their ground maybe ought to be in quotes when you talk about an RF ground system, but again you'll find all kinds of explanations about this, uh, about the idiosyncrasies of these systems in my book Hammond Shortwave Radio for the Electronics Hobbyist, Chapter 5. Uh, Again, this is figure 5-3, and I give some practical examples of how you can get on the air from out your, out your bedroom window, courtesy of Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which in my CW fist shall forever after mean da-da-da-da-da-da. -da 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 -da.